Hello, today we are going to talk about network compression and acceleration. It's a quite big topic. I will introduce it from three aspects. I will first introduce network compression and acceleration, then I will introduce front end compression methods, and after that I will introduce back end compression methods. Why do we need network compression and acceleration? Because sometimes we need to deploy our model to mobile devices such as mobile phone, watch, and so forth. And a large model cannot be computed on such small devices, or it would be extremely slow, which is unacceptable. Or sometimes a large model is expensive to train. We need to compress it to save the budget. There are three aspects to think about network compression and acceleration. First of all, it's necessary to do compression and acceleration. For example, a VGG16 network has 130 million parameters and each occupies 4 bytes, then it's around 500 megabytes, and it needs 30.9 billion flops for recognition tasks on one single image. And in paper predicting parameter in deep learning, it mentions that even though the network is large, only 5% of the weight could predict the rest of the weights and the rest of the ways they don't even need to be learned, and the network could achieve the same accuracy. There is a big redundancy in network, so we need to get rid of the information redundancy. And the ultimate goal is to compress a network so that we want to reduce the model complexity and storage. And of course, we want to accelerate the training and inference process. There are two main types of network compression and acceleration. We have front-end and back-end compression. Usually for front-end compression, it won't change the network architecture, and it includes knowledge, distillation, compact model design, filter pruning. The other type is back-end compression, and it usually will change the network significantly, and those changes are irreversible, and it needs the hardware to support this compression method. For example, if you want to use it on a single-chip microcomputer, does it support this backend compression method? So compression methods include low rank, network slimming, quantization. Now let's take a look at the details of these methods. What is low rank decomposition? A comp is a metric and we could do SVD or QR decomposition to the matrix. It could be applied to conf layers and also fully connected layers. It is a fairly standardized method and it's very easy to apply. It supports training from scratch and pre-train. The second method is pruning. If a network is a large tree, each layer is a branch. As we mentioned earlier, 95% of the parameters are redundant in the network. We could prune out those branches that don't affect the accuracy. It can be used in both COV and FC layers. It could um, robustly achieve good results on different settings, and it supports training from scratch and with pre-train. The third method is quantization. Usually we save a network and its parameters are of float 32 or float 64, but actually we don't need that high precision, especially on some embedded systems such as uh, FPGA. Flow is not well supported, those systems usually support 8-bit or even lower such as 2-bit, 4-bit integer type. Quantization converts the flow to integers so as to compress the network. The number of parameters doesn't change, but for each parameter, the storage it needs is smaller. A flow 32 needs 4 bytes, but if I quantize the model to 2-bit or 4-bit or 8-bit, then it only needs 1 byte and it's suitable for FPGA and single-chip microcomputer, which relies on the binary encoding. Knowledge distillation is like a teacher teaches a student. Usually a deeper and bigger model has higher accuracy, and we consider it as a teacher model. But when I use it, I prefer a lightweight model, which is a student model. But if I train a lightweight model from scratch, it won't perform very well. So instead, I train a teacher model first and then train a student model where the teacher model guides the student model to learn. So the teacher's knowledge will be transferred to the student. This method could be applied to both conf and FC layers. It's sensitive to the application and network architecture. 
the teacher model needs to be big and deep. Classification problem is easier, but detection, recognition, segmentation are harder problems to use a knowledge distillation. The last one is compact network, and we have talked about this method previously. For example, shuffle net, squeeze net, exception module. We design a lightweight model directly instead of trying to make a deep model smaller. It depends on the application, and it only supports training from scratch.